Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I as always am Ms. Grestar and this is another reaction to a death battle, Hey Hachi Mishima vs. Geese Howard. So of course make sure to click on the link in the description below to go to the official release first. Like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Watch that there, then come back here and we'll watch it together. So yes, Hey Hachi Mishima and Geese Howard, I don't know what games they're from. I know that they are from fighting games and according to the comments I've seen, I think it was Geese once before, but I don't really remember where nor do I remember any- Hey. Hey, hey, look at me. Don't ignore all the mess. Just look at me. All right, cool. Yeah, but um, but if I have seen Geese Howard before, I don't know anything about him. So we'll just have to go with it. But yeah, really quickly, I do apologize about the mess in my room. I know that it sucks, but um, it might be there a while. I just, I don't, I don't have storage space and I have things, so yeah. I wanted to have like a nice clean background and I could set stuff up all cool, but um, for now we just kind of have to deal with what we have. But yeah, not knowing anything about these two characters, like I can't even begin to, you know, make any sort of prediction right now. Like we just have to watch the analyses portions for these two. So with that, let's get to watching. So here we go for another death battle. Hey, Hachi Mishima versus Geese Howard. Hey, Hachi Mishima. Billionaire megalomaniac behind the king of the Iron Fist. Okay. And Geese Howard, karate kingpin behind the king of fighters. I These see. These two ruthless businessmen are as talented at martial arts as they are terrible at being dead. Aw. Whose fury <laughs> will prove the most fatal? He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. Hello. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. All right. So they're both businessmen who fight and are bad to their the children. Mishima cool. Saibatsu is a multinational conglomerate so powerful it can field armies massive enough to conduct world wars. All right. Its leader is the enigmatic martial arts master Heihachi Mishima. His goal? World domination. And with that hair, you know he's serious. This is like an extreme sport. He taught his super intelligent bear best friend karate. Oh. <laughs> and if he doesn't like you, he'll strap you to a rocket ship and launch you into space. Oh he's no. Like a kung fu Wolverine Elon Musk. He's Great. Well, he sure is something, all right. The words you're looking for here are ruthless and bastard. Hayachi <laughs> didn't like how his dad, Jinpachi, who looks like the Charizard to his Charmeleon, yeah. was running the family business. So he locked him in a basement to die and get possessed by a demon. Hayachi oh. built the Mishima Zaibatsu okay. into the largest military developer in the world. And believe it or not, he's also a family man with a wife and child. Sucks he had but, to kill his new baby mama with his bare hands after she got possessed by a demon too. Oh, what's that up with all these demon. demons? This was the devil gene, and it would prove to be Heihachi's greatest adversary for the rest of his life. I see. Fearing his son Kazuya had inherited this gene and its terrifying demonic power, he did what any loving, supportive father would do. Uh -oh. Toss his bitch ass off a cliff. If he climbed uh -oh. back up, it meant he was a devil. If he didn't, that meant he was A-OK, -okay. except for being dead. Right. Which is basically what medieval peasants did to witches. The Mishima are old fashioned. Uh huh, okay. Now truly alone, without love or family holding him back, Heihachi could focus on one thing power. I see. And not just the kind that lets you finance a satellite in order to kick family members you don't like out of it, but the punchy, kicky kind, too. One he second. Pause. One second. I just realized I'd forgotten to, like, start. Um, an audacity recording for my audio in case it goes robot -y. So hopefully it didn't go robot -y yet, and hopefully it won't from this point. But if it does, we have a background recording, presumably. <laughs> All right, play. Mishima style fighting karate, based on real life Goju Ryu. Goju Ryu, okay. Hard, soft, soft. Hard, soft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too easy, even for me, Wiz. Goju Ryu combines hard striking kicks and punches with open hand circular techniques for grapples, takedowns, and throws. Okay. Hachi's fighting style is aggression personified, with such techniques as the dragon uppercut, slash punch combo, and demon scissors. And if he really wanted to, he could impale you on one of his hair holes. Sharpened his hair. Hayachi <laughs> has even mastered the use of ki, or spirit energy, okay. to manifest lightning, like Ooh. in his classic electric wind god fist. His ki can even enhance his physicality to frankly absurd levels. Like the time he cut a bullet in his mouth. I'd oh. say that's crazy, but he did the same thing to a tomahawk before shattering it with his teeth. Oh. How much of that blade did he swallow? Dude must have gave his beehole braces. He's fine. Or the time He's he got fine. dogpiled by a bunch of Russian androids called Jacks, which all self-destructed, annihilating the temple he was in. 
Yeah, he got up a bit later, infuriated, I'm sure, by the world's audacity <laughs> to declare him dead from wow. such a paltry wound. Other Jack models were strong enough to destroy a six-mile-wide apocalyptic asteroid oh. and survive being blasted by a satellite laser. By taking a look at the size of the blast compared to the height of the clouds, this laser was packing around 1.6 megatons of TNT. Well, all right. And Heihachi can tear through the newest Jack models like that hatchet must have tore through his... Boomstick! Can't stop thinking about it, Will. <laughs> the other end that's coming out of, it's not going to be good. No. After decades of... He's tough, though. It's fine. Heihachi finally hosted the King of Iron Fist Tournament. And who should show up to the fight but his son Kazuya oh, that's for awkward. a salty run back, all grown up and definitely not dead by Cliff. Oh man, what I wouldn't give to beat the shit out of my dad and toss his ass off a cliff. <laughs> Probably what Elon Musk's son will do after he finds out what his dad named him. Uh, what? Man, he and Heihachi are kind of similar. He Wait, is that, was that his name on the top left? Oh no. I don't even want to think about Heihachi with a Twitter account. Well, except for the whole martial arts thing. Musk is just some pasty lazy. I did uh, Taekwondo, I did uh, Karate, uh, Kaikushin Kai. Oh man, he's been Heihachi all along! <laughs> that means his son is Kazuya. Someone keep their eye on him in case he throws him off a cliff. But hey, Musk, you never host a King of Iron Tesla tournament. Give me a go. Of course, of Despite course. Despite his humiliating defeat, Heihachi returned to battle his son once again, and this time tossed him into a volcano. These people really have a fetish for this one particular kind of execution. Yeah. Especially considering it never works. <laughs> Beating his son ain't too shabby, considering Kaz is one of the strongest fighters in the entire world, even without the devil gene. Okay. Which, surprise, turns him into a goddamn demon. Yeah, he yeah. He can fire laser beams fast enough to hit a satellite in a fraction of a second. And yes, this is the same satellite Satellite we keep bringing up. Okay. How far Does that matter? From the satellite, his forehead laser would have to be moving at just over one percent the speed of light. Okay. The Hatchmeister was fast enough to intercept the same beam in order to save Kazuya's life from his evil devil self. Maybe he had a change of heart. Uh oh. Um. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> or I could be wrong. Not after that. Man, they really hate each other. <laughs> grandson I think it's understandable, though. Three generations of Mishima men bonding over throwing each other off cliffs. Yay. After living a life consumed by hatred, the drive for power, and that... Heihachi reunited with Kazuya for one last battle to the death and shed a single tear at his son's complete transformation into a monster. There he oh, is. He did care. Maybe all of that crazy Bond villain bluster was just a facade for the heartbreak he suffered at destroying his own family and creating a cycle of violence, as so many fathers have before him. <laughs> Poor Dad. He fought Kazuya as he lived. A man. No cyborg enhancements, no devil gene, no... Whatever Yoshimitsu is, there. Heihachi fought his literal demons with nothing more than his stubborn, egomaniacal refusal to give up until he could stand no longer. Those who live by the volcano die by the volcano. Well, at least Rip. until he magically comes back in the next game. What? And when he does, he'll be determined, as always, to rule <laughs> the world with a Tekken. Don't you mean Iron Fist? Oh, God damn it, Boomstick. I don't understand. That does Tekken mean Iron Fist or something? Anyway, welcome to Geese's the Sun turn. streets of Southtown, USA. Should you ever find yourself there on vacation, you can rest easy knowing the Howard Connection Protection Agency will keep you safe from the clutches of the local mafia. Oh, good. Until That's great. you realize the Howard Connection is the mafia. Uh -oh. Top tier business model they got there. And in control of both stands the legendary Geese Howard. Okay, Wiz, that was all sounding pretty badass until you said his name was Geese. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Kind of dork is named after a waterfowl. The only worst name I could think of would be Swan. <laughs> his absentee dad may be an Austrian terrorist, but the only thing he's blowing up is his son's future. After Geese's mother succumbed to an illness they were too poor to treat, 15-year-old Geese tracked his father down to kill him. Okay. Before getting completely wrecked by his half-brother Krauser, who was nine years old. Oh. Oof. Now the ultimate scrub lord, he's found the martial arts master Tong Fu Ru to gain ultimate power and take revenge. Okay. He fights with a combination of the deep, strong stances and hard-hitting combos of karate, the quick, deadly blows of kickboxing, and his primary style, Aiki Jutsu. Translating to hard stuff, which again, really? all too easy. Yeah. Aiki Jutsu is all about throws, counters, and locks. It focuses on using opponents' weight against them, kind of like its descendant, Aikido. And you can't forget the shit-eating catchphrases. Two, 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 three, four, 
die forever. <laughs> what Geese was really there to learn was hippopotamus. Jesus. What? With Hakyoku Seiken, Geese can absorb life energy, or chi, from the Earth itself and mold powerful energy blasts. His Rapukin rockets across the ground like a buzzsaw, while Raging Storm is a massive fanged geyser that'll devastate anyone nearby. He can imbue these attacks with lightning called down from the heavens, or enhance his strength and speed to perform blindingly fast combos like Deadly Raid and Rashomon. <laughs> Wait just a goddamn second, Wiz. Did Geese just throw that poor man straight into the air and then patty cake his nuts on the way back down? <laughs> <laughs> that is pure evil. Geese's master felt this pretty rude, way, sensing his pupil's darker intentions. So instead of entrusting the dojo's most secret of scrolls to Geese, he gave them to his other student, Jeff. Jeff! God damn it, Jeff! I hate him as much <laughs> as Geese does. What kind of name is Jeff? Jeff. Infuriated, Geese left Tung School to take over Southtown's existing criminal empire and install himself as the city's new crime lord. Yeah, all right. Over some Settled in nicely. To dress up in karate gi at all times. Well, Geese's appreciation for Japanese martial arts extends to the culture as a whole. Music, architecture. He's a weeb, like a Taku <laughs> Vito Corleone. Who do you think his waifu is? Himself? Ooh, I can see it. Probably would do. I don't know. I appreciate Geese's tenacity and business acumen. It reminds me of me. Oh. Inventing reality bending weaponry for black markets around the globe has done my checkings account pretty well. Has it? Like my cyber goose. Mega Goose Howard? <laughs> oh, please, Wiz. I've seen your student loans from Mad Scientist You. It's a sideways eight next to a smiling turd emoji. Oh, no. Self respect next to the dollar pizza place you like so much. <laughs> <laughs> Despite being a badass poor lord, Geese was still plagued by inadequacy. So he took out his anger on the lamest person he knew, Jeff. <laughs> and he did it in front of his kids. I'm sure that'll turn out well. Oh no! Too. Wow, Jeff and Jeff's guy children. Got to be the pettiest bitch in all of Southtown, next to Jeff. Oh, you think that's bad? How about when Geese had a son and left him and his mother in poverty? And when oh. that son asked for help paying for his mom's illness, Geese ignored him. Wow, without a hint of irony. After successfully conquering Southtown, Geese hosted the King of Fighters Martial Arts Tournament in order to solidify his position as the strongest fighter around. Which he basically was. Geese is powerful enough to obliterate entire swaths of forest with his chi and defeat the reality warping entity Verse, okay. who could create a hurricane the size of a stadium. Even Takuma, one of Geese's subordinates, was strong enough to redirect a blast from the Zero Cannon, a city annihilating satellite laser. Considering the laser was intended to eradicate Southtown, which is a fictional stand-in for real-life South Miami, okay. the blast would have to have a yield of around 1.7 megatons. And judging by how fast it reached the Earth's surface, it must have been moving at over 2% the speed of light. And Taka was fodder compared to Geese. Seemingly unbeatable, Geese was finally confronted by Terry Bogard, the son of the man he murdered years before. Ah. You know, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff, yeah. That man has great taste in hats. After one of the fiercest battles ever witnessed, Terry defeated Geese and threw him from the top of Geese Tower to his death. Until he came back, so Terry threw him off it again. <laughs> you can't keep a good goose down. Whether it be manipulating future events from the shadows or demonstrating his magnificent power in front of the whole world, Geese's tenacity will always strive to crown him the King of Fighters. Stay down, maggot. Cool. All right, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all possibilities. It's time, time for, for a, a death, death battle. battle and pause. Okay, so let's try to figure this out because I'm a little, I'm a little bit torn right now. Like oftentimes I come in here with an idea of like who's going to win, and I, I really am not sure at this point. Um, they both seem to have pretty. I was gonna say fairly comparable speeds of, uh, or feats of speed rather, because I thought that um. One of Heihachi's feats had to do with like over 1% the speed of sound. But then presumably one of Gisa's students did like moved to match something that was like two per like over 2%, I think almost 3% the speed. Wait, speed of light is what I meant. Um, oh shoot, no, was Gisa's student saying speed of light or speed of sound? Oh no, I have to assume it was speed of light. I have to assume it was speed of light. And so I would, and then they said the like, and you know, he's way better than a student. So I would think that the speed there would have to go to Geese and not Heihachi. 
Um, in terms of the damage though, like what they're able to output and what they're able to withstand, I think that Heihachi has that one. Because there was one thing they gave uh, Geese that was like 1.7 megatons, I think, and for Howard, or for Heihachi, it was like 1.6 megatons of TNT, I think. But I, I didn't think that was the strongest thing, honestly, that Heihachi had um, survived because I'm trying to remember what that was. That might have been the laser feet, actually, like comparing the two laser feet sort of thing. Um, but I thought it was more powerful having like all of those different androids on top of him self-destruct at once when one android alone, um, it didn't even look like exploding, but just like running into like the asteroid or whatever. Um, it was like a six mile radius kind of thing, you know, like the six mile radius would have done a lot more um, damage, I think, you know, like to a city than the laser from um, Geese's analysis, right? I, I mean, I could be wrong, but it's just like six miles, it's pretty big. And um, <laughs> and obviously it would do more damage than just to the six miles it hit. Like there would be a lot of, there'd be a big explosion and stuff, you know? Um, unless I'm completely misremembering, I just feel like that feat is more powerful. So even though they didn't really give numbers as far as like megatons of TNT or whatever, I feel like that is um, a stronger thing than what Geese was able to do. Um, and, and if Heihachi could withstand multiples of that meteor essentially then i'm pretty sure he could withstand um geese's like his chi attack output you know like it didn't seem to be that strong in comparison it seemed to me like geese had the advantage in terms of different like combat styles it seemed like he was more versatile because they both had this the hard soft style um but then geese also had you know just like karate and taekwondo or whatever different things right um, whereas I really only remember Heihachi having the hard soft style, where his was really focused on aggression. Um, but just ultimate, like what it, I think what it's coming down to for me right now is I don't think that Geese would really have the means to put Heihachi down. And I think Heihachi could put Geese down. Um, like speed, it does seem to be in Geese's favor, unless I'm misunderstanding something. Um, the versatility seems to be a little bit in his favor. Like they both have, they can both use key or chi to different extents. Like, um, you know, Heihachi had like lightning enhancements too that he could use. Um, and then I, uh, one thing I'm not sure about is it seems to me that Heihachi would have had, um, more experience, like he's more experienced in general because he just lived longer and been fighting all that time as far as I'm aware. Um, but I also think that he's more experienced in terms of the different kinds of enemies he's fought. Um, because he's fought literal demons, you know? Um, and did all of those fights against demons go so well? No. No, not necessarily. But, um, yeah. He seems to be okay. I also wonder if they're going to consider Heiachi surviving being thrown into a volcano. Like, actually being submerged in the lava and then coming back out totally fine. wonder if they're gonna count that as, like, an actual feat, or if that's just like, yeah, he came back in the next game because fans liked him, you know? Um, like, I'm not going to count that personally, but I just wonder. Um, but yeah, again, comes down to, I don't know how Geese would kill Heihachi, but I think Heihachi could kill Geese. So, Heihachi's going to win this one, and play. Okay, well, there's a volcano, so someone's gonna get thrown into that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Hachi. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> It's nice they have the subtitles for us. I didn't catch all that, but I'm sure it was great. Didn't even talk about his sharp hair. <laughs> I will extend my hands, reset old man. Cool, I heard most of that. Not two of them! Oh, he dodged them. It's, oh. That was more than two. Hey, Hachi, stop being so predictable. 
Oh, he's strong, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! Yeah, that's the thing that I thought was like Geese's one of Geese's strongest, and I think Heihachi could withstand that. Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> Way to turn that around. How you doing, Geese? You dying? That was a neat little pull out there. Kind of wish it had done more in that moment. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> Ow! Oh, that was cool. Oh! Uh oh. <laughs> oh, gosh! Ah. Alright, he's. Uh, yeah, I think he's dead. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> For geese, this goose was good. Yeah. Both fighters had the brutal tenacity and martial arts mastery to push each other to the limit, but Heihachi just had the greater limits to push. Sorry, Wiz, this one was obvious. One of them throws people off cliffs, the other has people throw him off cliffs. Kind of a no duh. <laughs> it was not a no duh. In fact, Geese's wider variety of chi techniques were able to keep Heihachi at a distance, and his ability to draw chi from the earth meant he could spam them for. Right, because it wasn't his won. limited source. Yeah. But Heihachi has had plenty of experience with projectile spammers like Kazuya, whose lasers are fast <laughs> enough to reach outer space in seconds. He'd have no trouble getting in close. Heihachi's decades of combat training over Geese also allowed him to learn and adapt to his Aikijutsu. He's even defeated Aikido masters like Nina Williams before, so it wasn't entirely new okay, to him. Okay, yeah. Ultimately, it came down to who was stronger, faster, and tougher. Both scale to characters like Jack and Takuma, who survived satellite lasers nearly equal to each other. But both feats were performed pretty casually by weaker characters. So what could they do at their best? Great question. For Geese, let's look at his fight with Verse, okay. who created that hurricane. By measuring its size compared to the stadium to get the mass of the clouds, making a storm that big would take about 1.8 gigatons 1. of TNT, okay. about a thousand times more powerful than the Zero Cannon that could destroy Southtown. But we're not done. One single Jack unit was able to destroy a six-mile-wide asteroid heading toward Earth. Right. Estimating its volume and density, the energy it would take to violently fragment it is nearly eight gigatons of TNT. Over so four then, times more powerful than Versus. And then he survived multiple. And Heihachi can tear through jacks like nothing, which is crazy because that satellite laser it reacted to was moving at about 4% the speed of light, twice as fast as the Zero Cannon and Geese's best. Okay. Geese was a clever, ruthless opponent, but Heihachi's power, experience, and sheer bullheaded stubbornness allowed him to walk away the victor. Awesome. Man, this fight was so intense, it almost made me sheet my <laughs> Is Heihachi Mishima. Claps for Heihachi. Cool. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode of Death Battle. Thank you. As always, you can get our latest merch at store.rooster.com. Wow, that's a death on it. Click down below to watch another video. Next time on Death Battle. Okay, we got Blake versus a girl from Attack on Titan. Mikasa. Mikasa Sukasa. All right. Cool. Well, let's talk about this death battle. So I was right, yay me. Um, I think I was wrong about the speed thing, <laughs> but but I'm glad that a lot of the other things that I talked about did actually come into play as far as why Heihachi, they deemed Heihachi to be the winner. Um, with his um, experience, um, both in terms of just like how long he's been fighting, how long he's been doing this, you know, and the kinds of enemies that he's gone up against. Um, I did acknowledge that Geese had um, the versatility with all of his chi techniques. I didn't acknowledge the fact that he could just kind of like, he had an endless resource of it, you know? Um, but I, it did come to mind during the analysis for the two. I, I, I didn't mention it, it did come to mind there. 
didn't really come to mind um, during my prediction because I just didn't think that that would be the determining factor. Um, I, I'm glad that I was right about the, the strength thing with the, the meteor. I even remember that it was like six miles wide, like yay me. Actually, was it six mile radius now that I think about it? Because that would mean a 12 meter or 12 mile diameter, right? Anyway, um, so that was cool. Um, I didn't really think about the fact that <laughs> Heiachi was just like punching the androids and they were, you know, dying kind of thing. Um, where he was just able to tear through them so easily. I was just thinking about how durable he was that he was able to take um, blows from multiple of them at once. Um, so yeah, that definitely makes sense. I did not think of the proper strength feat for Geese, which was like the hurricane kind of thing, um, but it just kind of worked out for me that <laughs> Heihachi's was stronger. Um, it's one of those interesting things that I, th I feel like Death Battle's been doing a little bit more recently um, than they have necessarily in the past, where they'll give numbers for feats and then they won't use those feats as like the big determining things. And so it can be difficult to compare those feats directly because it's like, I do think that Geese's was stronger in the, in the two feats where they gave numbers for them in terms of like megatons of TNT. Um, but then Heihachi had a stronger feat that they just kind of mentioned. I mean, it wasn't like a passing mention, like they showed a clip and everything, you know? But um, it wasn't given the same sort of like scientific or mathematical breakdown, um, which is interesting. Cause um, in that sense, like showing the numbers at all for those other feats is misleading. But, um, I don't know. Like you could still, you could still piece it together, obviously. Um, you just have to like be really paying attention and not be too stuck on those other numbers that you did catch um, to not be able to, I guess, like, think beyond them. Um, because I did, I honestly did have that concern where it's like, I, um, I, I thought that Heihachi had, like, a lower number than Geese did in the two feats that I was comparing. And so I was wondering, like, wait, is the Meteor feat actually more significant? Because they didn't give numbers for it. So did they not give numbers for it because they gave numbers for a thing that was better? Or because they were hiding the fact, you know? Like, I was, I was torn on that, but I just went with my gut. Um, so it worked out for me in that case. Um... I guess really quick, like, I don't, I don't have much else to say about the prediction, I don't think. Um, so the animation, I thought the fight itself was really good. Like, uh, the fight was clean and smooth. I liked the progression of it. I thought that the, um, the banter between the two was really funny. Um, you know, it was funny like the last episode it was, um, with, you know, let, uh, Luthor versus Doom. But, um, like, obviously not to the same... It wasn't used in the same way because, you know, they were the super villains bantering back and forth. And this one was just like the kind of like pompous fighter, especially on Geese's side. Um, but, but like the predictable being thrown out a number of times. And then Hey, I was just like, don't say it, you know, and then he said like it was a good it was a good way to do it. Um, it was a nice setting. Like, I don't fully understand like the story behind this death battle as far as like why they were both there, why they were fighting. Um, but it was enough set up for me to be satisfied. Um, and the location that it took place in, um, it was great. It let them make use of the whole volcano thing, which was a callback, especially to Heihachi, but you know, a little bit to Geese as well, I believe. Um, and so that was, that was really nice. Um, the different things that they did with like, you know, the camera, right? That was good with the, the zooms in and out. The, um, it was just, yeah, I appreciated this one quite a bit. I had a good time with it. Um, and yeah, the voice acting too, assuming that there was voice acting and they weren't, yeah, they, surely they weren't just clips. Yeah, voice acting was good. I appreciated it. Um, which I have in other episodes too. I just forget to say, I just, I just forget. Like Yoda versus Mickey. Like that was great, the voice acting in that. Anyway, um, <laughs> don't think I have anything more to say about this death battle. Just really quickly about the next one, Blake versus Mikasa. Um, yeah, so I've seen, you know, the first three seasons of Ruby. Like, if you're curious, you can kind of watch my reactions to them on this channel. Um, it was one of those things where, for the most part, it was just me, just my camera reacting to it. You had to, like, pull up the video on your own, and I would, like, tell you when I'm starting it, that kind of thing. Um, if you want to catch those, you know, the first three seasons of Ruby, feel free. Um, I started watching season four. I wasn't as into it. Like, I just didn't think it was as good. I wasn't enjoying it as much, um, which is fair to an extent because the first three seasons were all kind of building up to the same thing especially considering season one it was like one episode would be like a scene or two you know they were hardly episodes full episodes um but yeah and then season four was like starting kind of a new sort of plot right um or arc you know that but uh yeah i stopped watching and uh, because Rooster Teeth also they claimed my videos after they said they wouldn't and it was frustrating and stuff etc um so the point of that was just, <laughs> I don't know, I'm not caught up in terms of what Blake is capable of. Um, 
and we'll, we'll just have to see. You know, I don't remember most of what I do now, you know? Um, and then Mikasa, Attack on Titan. I've never seen any Attack on Titan. I know that they fight Titans, but I don't think that they like one-on-one -on -one Titans. Like I thought the whole thing was specifically like, you know, they have their special gear that lets them like zip around all Spider-Man style, you know? And then you have to like attack with their big old swords on the back of the Titans necks, I think. That's what I remember from like games that I've played or, you know, little things that you see in media. Um, but I don't know like anything about strength or durability really, so it'll be interesting. But yeah, let me know what you all thought about this death battle in the comments below, whether you liked it, whether you disliked it, what you thought about this or that, etc. So on and so forth. Then next time we will be watching Blake versus Mikasa, so I hope you're looking forward to that. But yes, with that, we're calling it here. So have a good one, everybody.